right, we are live. Just giving you guys a close-up shot of some of our graphics. Some of you may have already figured out where we are. Just waiting to see if folks can see this. If you're online, oh, I see a thumbs up. That's awesome. So that's a good thing. I'm going to wait one more minute. Oh, definitely starting to see thumbs up and hearts. Well, good morning, everybody. We are back for another one of our virtual Keeper Chats. Today is a really rainy day outside, so good morning, Patty. We are once again in our Rainforest Rivers and Reefs building, and we're going to be meeting some new critters that you guys have not seen on our virtual chats before. So it looks like everything is fine and I'm seeing thumbs up, which means people are seeing us and I'm starting to see comments, which is always a good thing. All right, so I am gonna pan into what we're gonna be talking about today. Hi, Hannah and Mackenzie. So, these guys are what the focus of our virtual keep chat is going to be about today. I have Kyle with me again, our friendly neighborhood aquarist, and so I'm going to turn it over to him so he can tell you all about these guys. Well, good morning, everybody. Hopefully everybody's having a pretty good day. Uh, as was mentioned, we're going to be talking about these two types of fish that are in this right now. So guys probably all lionfish at this point but there are two different species in this tank we have red lionfish and common lionfish um, they're extremely extremely difficult to tell apart uh, one of the only really good ways to tell them apart is actually with a DNA test but if you do look very 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 closely and you can count the two fins towards the tail that are moving so you, there is a difference between the species with the number of rays on the fins, but it's almost impossible to count it while they're alive. So better death doing it with the DNA test. But anyway, these guys are lionfish. So we have 14 lionfish here at the zoo, and they are all a species of, that we're really worried about here in the Atlantic Ocean, just because they're starting to show up a heck of a lot more um, than they ever have in the past, and they actually don't belong here. So that are what we call a invasive species, which means that they're a species that is living in a place where they're not native, where they're not supposed to be. So if we look at the map, actually, which just popped up, lionfish are supposed to live over here in the yellow, and they've been popping up a lot down over here. So you're probably wondering, well, what's the big problem, things like that. Well, lionfish are venomous. All those big beautiful spines on the top have venom in them so any fish that tries to eat them can't around here so they eat very very well and they'll eat pretty much anything but nothing eats them so I you guys probably connect the dots to see the problem at this point so we're really really worried about these guys they have no native native predators here and they're eating up all of the local fish all right, so we're already getting some questions that are rolling in. Awesome, let's go for it. Um, oh, Annabelle says, hi, Lucas, age eight. It's his birthday tomorrow, and his dog says hi. So happy birthday a day early. Good morning, Carrie. Um, Diana wants to know, why are they called lionfish? So they kind of got that name because when they flare their fins out, which nobody's really doing right now, they may do it in a little bit, uh, they kind of resemble a lion's mane where it, encompasses their entire head or so that's, that's the way we they say okay and um uh ryan H. if they're poisonous so they're not poisonous they're venomous so that actually segues into a pretty good thing that i wanted to talk about uh the difference between venom and poison so venom which is what these guys are has to be injected into your into your body so lionfish would be poisonous because the spine has to go into your skin. Uh, a snake, certain types of snakes would be ven uh, venomous because they have to inject that into your skin. Uh, and then poisonous would be something that you ingest or you eat. 
So a poison dart frog, if you eat the frog, you get that venom, um, or that poison, excuse me. Uh, so if you eat it it's po and get sick, it's poisonous. If it stings you or bites you and you get sick, it's venomous. So these guys are venomous. So Scarlett and Anastasia want to know if they sting you, will it kill you? It depends on who you are. If you're a, for example, young, healthy male, uh, you should be perfectly fine. You're gonna, you're gonna hurt a lot, and you're gonna really wish that it never had happened. But you should be okay. But if you were older, or if your heart wasn't very strong, or if you were allergic, you could get very, very sick or even die from them. So Ryan, um, age 12, wants to know what do they eat? So that's a great question. So Ryan, they'll pretty much eat anything. They'll eat small fish, they'll eat crabs, they'll eat shrimp, they'll eat anything that they can swallow. So that's what makes them such a problem over here is because they eat anything and nothing eats them. So. They, they just will overload the population and take out all the other fish. I love some of these questions. Samantha, age seven, wants to know, what's their conservation status? Ooh, so they are of least concern and considered invasive over here. So that means that nobody's really worried about them from where they come from. Uh, they're doing really, really well out there in the ocean. But over here, they're obviously, like I said, I can't stress enough that they're an invasive species. So. And hi to one of our favorite people, Rebecca, age eight. She hi, wants Rebecca. to know, why are they venomous? That's a That's good a question. That's a great, great question. So lionfish are in a family of fish called Scorpididae, and, all, and those belong to like stonefish and things like that. They're all venomous. They all have those venomous spines, and they use it for defense. So it doesn't help them hunt. It doesn't help them do anything. Uh, they actually will just swallow their food whole, like a big gold suck. Um, so it's all, all defense. Basically, if you try to eat a lionfish, if the lionfish survives, you'll never eat it again. But even if it dies, you'll never try to eat another lionfish again in your, as long as you survive it. So it's purely defense. And Juliana wants to know, why do they have stripes? That's a great question. So it's part of their, their pattern, things like that. So it just kind of, they're showing off saying, hey, I'm, tough, I'm dangerous, you don't want to try to eat me, basically, is what it boils down to. So they have the, the big fins, the make them look bigger than they are, the stripes showing off that, hey, I'm, I'm bold, I'm something you don't want to mess with. And Silas, age nine, wants to know, what's their main prey? Prey? Um, they mostly eat fish, uh, and definitely small little krill and things like that, but they're going to be going for a lot, a lot of little fish, which is what they're mostly taking out on the reefs, is a small little reef fish. So you can actually have a section of coral reef, like in the Caribbean or the Bahamas, where if people aren't trying to keep the lionfish numbers in check, that's all you'll find is just lionfish. And uh, hello to Melissa watching in Florida. Oh, hi, um, Chris wants to know how deep in the ocean do they live? So these guys. Can go, they don't go super duper deep. They definitely like that warmer tropical zone, but they can be found, you know, a lot deeper than a normal person is going to be going without a scuba dive tank or without being able to really well hold your breath. Um, they're not going to be right up on the shallows, but, but they can be, be found in, on in the between, reefs. Yeah, in the reefs in between. I can't give you an exact number because it's a it's a big varying range, but. If you're just splashing around on the beach knee deep, you're probably not gonna bump into a lionfish. So, okay, so that's good to know. Odin, age five, wants to know how many babies they have at once. They have a lot. I don't know the exact number off my head, but I know it's more, a couple thousand eggs. And they lay eggs. They lay eggs, yeah. So they don't, give, they don't have live babies. Uh, they lay eggs and they can do a couple thousand in one shot. Would a lionfish eat a different lionfish? Kaiden, age nine, wants to know. So a lionfish will try to eat anything that they can put in their mouth. So if you had a very small lionfish and a very big lionfish, it is possible that they would try to swallow it. Um, but they're mostly going to go for the non, the basic little, if you think of a typical fish, that's what they're going to be going for, those little, little guys. So as you can see in this tank, we have a lot of lionfish, and if they... 
ate each other, we probably wouldn't have as many yeah. in here. Yeah, and we got them all around relatively the same size, and they're all kind of similar in size already, so they're not going to try to swallow each other at all. Do we know how they're getting into the Atlantic? David wants to know. So Is it migration or? It's definitely not migration because they would have to, they don't swim through the open ocean like that. It's um, it's our fault. It's people's fault that they're here, in all honesty. There's a couple prevailing theories. Uh, the one that is most commonly accepted is that people had them as pets, and they either didn't want them anymore, they got stung, they got annoyed with them, something happened, and they just threw them in the ocean, um, and they survived. And that you see that problem a lot, a lot of times with people getting a pet. They don't really know what they're getting into, and then they just toss them outside thinking, oh, it'll, it won't survive, it'll be fine. But then they do, and then more people do it over and over again, and then you end up with a, a huge population. So Brian, age 42, wants to know, is there a market for people eating them? Yes. So, well, it's an up-and-coming market. It's not a huge market, but a lot of places in the Caribbean, Florida, especially as well, too, they're trying to develop a nice market for these guys. And they're also coming out with a lot of cookbooks that you can buy online. Um, it's, it's not gonna be, it'll never reach a market like cod for fish and chips or, or something like along those lines, but it's definitely a niche market where you, you'll see specialty stores having it and things like that. So is it kind of a delicacy? Um, I would say it's just not super prevalent yet. And there's a special way you have to prepare the fish too. So it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world. And they're not gonna, they're, you're not gonna go out there and just drag nets and grab them. You have to get them a certain way but they, they're, they're, they're up and coming. So um, here's a good question from Hannah, age eight. Where does the venom come from? So they actually have, if you guys can see, venom glands right around the back there. So even after they pass away, they can still sting because it's just, they just gotta push on the top. So right underneath there, there's like little packets and it's these, you could consider these spines like a needle and once you step on it, it pushes the packet up and that goes in. Ah. Uh, they are beautiful. They are. They're really, uh, they really pretty. They are pretty fish. And that's why they're super popular in aquariums, and that's why they probably ended up here. So where did they originally come from, though? What's their natural... So their native so home... If the map comes up, I can point to it really, really we'll easily. take a look at this. Their native home is what we call the Indo-Pacific. So when I say that, I mean Australia, the Philippines, Indonesia... Um, Getting, yep, there we go. Okay. So if you're getting into the Indonesia area, Australia, coming out up here, even up into the Japan area, um, getting into China, things like that. So they're definitely, they're on the other side of the world, pretty much. And now they're here. And now they're here. I think the closest sighting that was confirmed by scientists to us in Massachusetts was somebody spearfished one in New Jersey, I remember reading. So okay. that's pretty close. That's fairly cold water and that was in the summertime obviously but they do it's kind of disconcerting to see them creeping up that much so jillian and nathan want to know how many we have at the zoo 14 in this tank right now which is a good number for this size tank um, it definitely works out for us and lucas age eight wants to know how many feet long i think it's probably more along the line of inches right yeah i mean a big for this species like the big beefy ones we have in here, that's that's big. That's a big lionfish. So that's probably like a foot that's in. It's probably change. like a foot. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe a little bit bigger than a foot. They're not they're not super big, this type of lionfish. There are some that are super duper small. Um, but the for the most part these guys stay right around that size. And so we talked about the fact they don't have any um, natural predators predators in our area, but mm -hmm. what about in their native in their native habitat, they definitely do. Um, some species of uh, grouper will eat them. Uh, sharks, there's certain species of sharks over there that have learned, um, kind of adapted to eat them. Um, and there's other large predatory fish that have learned and know how to eat these guys. But around here, there's really nothing. They say maybe a couple types of grouper figured it out, but those are more uh, individuals as opposed to a species that just can, can eat them up, so. And Amanda wants to know, how would you control the population in the ocean? 
So in the Atlantic Ocean where they don't belong, there is a extensive um, population control management program that's going on right now. They actually encourage people that know what they're doing. So don't you guys just run out there and start doing it. But a lot, very, very popular uh, spear fishing animal. So a lot of people who spear fish go out there and collect them and will harvest them and clean them up. That's one major, major way that they're controlling the population right now. I actually believe that they had a bounty on them at one point, so you could actually spear fish these guys, bring them into the Florida fishing game, and you'd get money for them. I don't know if that's on anymore, but I know it was at one point. Um, Tegan wants to know, how did uh, these fish get to Buttonwood? That's a great question. So these guys, we actually acquired from a collection, a tra aquarium collection trade. So they were either born in a zoo or aquarium, or they were collected from the area where they're not supposed to be, which is another nice way to get them out. You just kind of scoop them up and sell them to people who want them for pets in an aquarium. But all the fish that we do get here are from people that sustainably source them, which means they get them the right way, they know what they're doing, and they only sell to people that know what they're doing. They're not just gonna sell them willy-nilly to whoever wants them. So Haley, age eight, that's a good segue, said, can I catch one fishing? And probably, probably not. not. In our area. I mean, you're not going to catch one up here fishing, I can tell you that. Um, you'd have to be extremely, extremely, extremely lucky or unlucky, however you want to take it. And it would have to be the summertime and it would have to be very warm water. If you go to Florida, when you get older and you learn how to spear fish and you see one, you can catch one that way. But conventional, like you think of a guy throwing or somebody throwing um, a fishing pole around, you're, you're probably not going to catch one of these guys. So here is a really good question uh, from Gwen, age 10. Um, is there a difference in what you feed in captivity than what they would get in the wild? It's like a great question. So there is, it, there is and there isn't. So we give them a wide variety. They get a lot of different options here at the zoo. And it is like what they would eat in the wild, but it's not as specific. So it's basically like saying in the wild, these guys would eat fish, uh, shrimps, uh, crabs, things like that, but the actual species that they eat are different than what we give them. That's like saying you guys eat cereal, but if you lived in the woods, you would eat raisin bran while you, at home you eat cornflakes. It's both cereal, they're just different types. And question about whether or not they're like a puffer fish in that you have to be careful how you eat them. So you have to be careful how you clean them. So you guys are talking about the we or fugi puffer fish that you have to be licensed to cut it a specific way and things like that it's not that intense but like i said you got to make sure that you cut those venom sacks sit nice and low so you got to make sure that you get them out without popping them all over the place or you get you getting yourself stung and things like that so it's it's not as intense you just really have to know what you're doing and a big thank you to Brian who donated. There is a donate button oh, that you. is available. We love our supporters. We couldn't keep going with what we're doing without your help. Your donation goes to the Buttonwood Park Zoological Society, which helps support things like these virtual keeper chats and our educational program. Is that? So we, we have a little oh, uh, surprise in the tank, guys. She doesn't sometimes come out, but this is our snowflake moray eel. Uh, I didn't want to mention her at first just in case she didn't want to say hello, but she is out right now. She's a super, super cool fish. Uh, when you start thinking about moray eel, line fish photo bombing it, but when you think about moray eels, everybody always thinks about those big green ones that you always see in aquariums or you see people scuba diving next to you. But these guys are actually from where the line fish are supposed to be found. They're from the Indo-Pacific area and they like to eat similar things to the line fish. They like little crabs and shrimp and small little fish and things like that. And super cool, fun little girl right there. Um, How long is she? I know we're just seeing her head. You're just seeing her head. She's actually pretty long. She's longer than the, just about just as long as the biggest lionfish. I was gonna say longer than lionfish, but probably just about as long as the biggest one. So a little over a foot long. Uh, but what's really cool about her, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera or if well, the lionfish get out of the way. as soon as the lionfish moves along. Um, if you look at the top of her head, you're gonna see what look like two yellow straws coming out of her face. That's actually, oh, she oh, went back she away. She poked back in. But All anyway, right, she, comes we'll back out, she comes back out. Uh, you may be able to see her, her, her nostrils and she has a phenomenal sense of smell. And that's how she's finding her food in this tank. All that right. was a fun little surprise. I didn't expect her to come say hi. Um, 
so lots of questions about the venom and the stingers. Um, Mia, age four, wants to know if they have stingers. They have spines. So it's not stingers like you guys would think of a jellyfish or a bee or something like that. Think of it as everybody's been to the doctor, so uh, needles. So the doctor gives you guys a shot. Think of that coming out of their back. And there was another shot of our snowflake eel who's poking her head out. I'm gonna just try and hold still and see if she gets used to me being up against the glass. So snowflake eels and other moray eels, they love to hide in rock cracks and crevices and things like that. Um, and a pretty big eel can hide in a pretty small spot. So if you guys, when you guys get a chance to come back to the zoo, this central rock pile in the in the lionfish tank is where she really, really likes to hang out. It looks like she's disappeared again for the moment. So uh, there was a question, let's see from Chloe uh, how long have we had them Chloe age nine wants to know the lionfish yep we've had the lionfish for almost three years now uh, we got them for the opening of the rainforest rivers and reefs building uh, we really wanted to push that message of um, invasive species and making sure that you guys are being smart with your choices and when you do decide to do an aquarium or if you do decide to do an aquarium. Uh, so the building's been open for a little over two years, so about three years now. And there's another shot of our um, snowflake eel. She keeps poking her head out in different spots. Yeah. So Maria asked, what fish is this? So That is a snowflake moray eel. Super cool. I, she's one of my one of my favorites, I like her. She really is. Gwen, age 10, wants to know, what is um, what is the best sense that a fish has? <laughs> so, it depends on the fish. Some of them can see really, really well. Uh, some can smell really, really well. Um, certain types of fish, like sharks, have a really cool sense where they can sense electricity or electrical impulses. Every time you guys move a muscle, it makes a little bit of electricity, so they can pick up on that. Uh, it all depends on the type of fish, though. And uh, another question, do any other animals live in the tank with them, or would they kill anything in there with them? So obviously we've got this snowflake eel. Yeah, so when you do lionfish in a tank, you have to be very, very aware that they will try to eat smaller fish or crabs or things like that. So we do uh, we do have some snails in here just to help keep the algae down. There's actually one sitting on the side of the wall over there. Um, the snowflake eels in there, obviously. And there's some small little sea stars that are in the rocks. And there is a sea cucumber who helps us keep the tank clean. But as far as like things that you guys are gonna actually see, no, it's mostly just the lionfish. Um, like I said, you have to be really careful when you do them. And these are... Um, anemones all over the place. Anemones. Yeah. So those guys kind of just come in when you start doing warmer water. They come in on the rocks and different things like that. Uh, they can grow pretty quickly, so we're in the process of just trying to manage them to a, a number where they look nice, but they're not overtaking the tank. All right, Hannah, age eight, wants to know what the black dots are on their tail. Oh, that's just part of their, part of their pattern but you're actually getting a good look. So there's two types of um, appendages that fishes have. They have spines and rays, and the linefish do a great job of showing that off. So all that stuff that throws the venom off, like I was saying, all the stuff on top, mm -hmm. those are all spines. And then the, anything that kind of moves independently, very fluidly, those are rays. So when you look at a fish, you can actually ID them based on the number of spines, the rays in certain spots. So that's a great, great observation. <laughs> this is from Carrie. And you know, I almost said this, Carrie. Carrie wants to know if the eel knows Kyle's voice. Why is she coming out? And <laughs> I, I don't know if it's his voice, but I do know from watching the fish when I'm coming through the building that they seem to recognize the difference between staff oh, yeah, they, and the public. Yes. The, so these guys definitely can tell when it's us or when it's somebody else. Fish are a lot smarter than people give them credit for. Um, the snowflake eel, she's just, she's just choosing this to be her time to shine. Trust me guys, even, if, even when I walk by and I want her to come out, she's not gonna come right up to me all the time, so. And so, uh, let's see, Miguel H9 wants to know, how long do these guys live? 
great, great question. So once again, you can age a fish by its otolith, which we've talked about, I think, in almost every single chat, the ear bone. Um, so these specific guys, they can live, they're not super long lived like other species of fish, but eh, a couple years, not five or six, I wanna say, maybe a little bit longer. Usually a little bit longer in a aquarium setting, but in the ocean, not super duper long. And um, <laughs> Logan, age eight, we get this question every keeper chat. Do they have a favorite keeper? Well, for the lionfish, it's whoever's going to throw food in their tank. They don't have a specific favorite, but whoever's going to be giving them food, they're, you're their favorite for the day. And Hannah, age eight, wants to know, can the eel see if it is dark? So the eel can see pretty well, but that sense of smell is really what is going. So I don't know if you guys can really see, but right on the tip, right on the front of her mouth, you see those two little um, kind of yellowish looking nose appendages. She has a very, very, very good sense of smell. And that's what she's mostly using. And uh, Rebecca wants to see the sea cucumber. The Ooh. sea cucumber is super tough to see. Um, they usually hide in the rocks and they will come out mostly at night. And what they'll actually do though, I'll talk about them though. They eat the sand and anything that's in the sand that's food, they will digest and then they poop out clean sand, which is super helpful. Uh, you see a lot more of them in our coral reef tank, but again, they really only come out at night. All right, it's Kyle spots one yeah, before if I the see end it. of this. And oh. it, if I don't spot one, guys, I'm going to tell you its name so you can look it up online. It's called a tiger tail sea cucumber. And you guys can Google that and a beautiful there picture will goes. pop right up. So Leah wanted to know why um, the snowflake eel is called a snowflake eel. If she comes out and you guys get to see that pattern, yeah. it's because she kind of has... It's not really like a snowflake, but it's the, the whitish on the darkish, which looks like snow falling, sort of. So that's why she got that name. Sophia and Savannah from New Hampshire want to know how s smart fish are. Depends on the fish. So there's some fish that are incredibly smart. Um, if you guys want to watch a fun video, YouTube uh, puffer fish training. So this these people added one aquarium, which was phenomenal. Uh, actually trained their puffer fish to recognize different shapes and then it would swim across a pool and go to the shape that they show it and then get food. Uh, other fish have been trained to swim to a certain spot and then they can get fed over there. Uh, there's fish that have been trained to do like to do spins like a little roll. Uh, so some fish are super duper smart other fish are not super duper smart. <laughs> So it really, really depends on the type of fish. Uh, fish, when you guys talk about fish, you're talking about one of the most diverse groups of animals on the earth. So there's huge, huge variability, huge differences between different types of fish. Um, oh, here's a great question from Carolyn wants, um, nope, from Angie, age nine, wants to know why do their eyes have these markings? So those markings, are you talking about the black or the I think the stripes? it's just because their eyes, if you look around them, it's the striping around their yeah, eyes. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of going with the striping that's on their body. There's so no, again, more camouflage. More, more like showing off, camouflage type thing. This is a good shot with his fins out. Yeah. Um, Lee Westgate wants to know, do we have any eggs in the tank? Nope. So these guys kind of just spawn. So even if we did have eggs, it would just get sucked up by the, the filter and that would be the end of them. I haven't actually seen a spawning event with these guys and I haven't really found any eggs in this tank. So. Well, here's a great question from Kylie. Do we target feed any of the fish? We do target feed some of the fish. In this tank, I will try to get the smaller line fish target fed with some food. Um, I don't really feed them off the tongs. I more just kind of throw it and aim for them. The eel though, she, if she does want to participate and come up, she is trained to swim over to a little pole that has kind of like, it almost looks like a, a ball on the end of it. And when she touches that pole or bites that pole, I give her food. It's a great way to just get her away from all the lionfish. Not that I'm worried about them bothering her or her bothering them. But it's just a very good way for me to get a good look at her, especially since she doesn't come out and very, very often. And I know she's eating. And I know she's eating. And I can tell you exactly how much she's eating. Um.
likes to eat and things like that. Plus, it's just fun. Can you tell the difference between the males and females, the boys and girls? In For lionfish? Fish? No. It's, it's all kind of inside that tells the difference. But with the eel, you can't. Okay. And how much do they weigh? Kaiden H9 wants to know. They're not an incredibly... They're a dense fish, but they're not incredibly heavy. Um, maybe a pound or so. Maybe. And that would be one of our big, big ones. Fish are not the heaviest things in the world. Do you ever see our lionfish fighting with one another? No. Lionfish will hang out in pretty decent sized groups. They're not going to be hitting huge schools, but they will sit on a reef kind of like you see them in this tank right now. They don't fight and argue. There's definitely a dominance where smaller fish will back down and let a bigger fish eat, but that's just like any other group dynamic in any animal. So they don't really fight. They just kind of understand the respect that the bigger ones go first. Caitlin, age seven, um, I think you touched upon this, how old these guys are. So I don't know exactly that how old they are, but we've had them for almost three years. So they're older than three years old. Um, they weren't babies when we got them. But a fish's growth depends on the temperature of the tank and the amount of food that they get. So it can vary a lot. And Ryan, age 12, wants to know about the snowflake eel. Are they're not endangered. Um, they're a species, I don't even think they've been they're either a species of least concern or they're not even been evaluated. So there's not a lot of data on them as far as their conservation status. Um, so I think we've scrolled through most of the questions. I know you had talked maybe about um, doing a little something with this tank. Yeah, so if you guys want and if you guys are in feed the lionfish, um, the only thing is I'm going to do it from the back so I won't be able to answer any questions. So if you guys want me to feed them and watch that, just let us know. Give us some thumbs up. Yeah, if give you us some thumbs up if Kyle you want to see the feed. feeding. And I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. Lots of thumbs up? Lots of hearts. Lots okay, of hearts. So what I'm going to do then, guys, is I'm going to pop in the back and I'm going to feed these guys. Um, and then just try to hold on to your questions. Make as many fun comments as you want, but try to hold your questions until I come back. And then I will answer all of your questions. Three, time, three times a week. So Nate, age nine, Monday, wanted to know Wednesdays that. So on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays is when these guys are typically getting fed. And so we're just gonna... We're just gonna take a step back from the tank. And we're gonna wait for Kyle. You're gonna see him add some food to that tank and you'll see sort of how they feed. And you can see them actually all sort of congregating up near the top. Oh, and so now we got a lionfish feeding frenzy. So now if I step away, you can see they're all up near the top. You can see those little bits of food kind of floating. They're making quick work of it. Get in here. You can see them sort of gulping up the food.
Diana says, thanks for doing this. We love doing this. This has been a great way for us to sort of connect with you guys. We love our visitors and we miss them, but this, this is a way for us to still sort of connect with you guys. We are happy to do it. All right, so he's, I think, added all he's going to add, and I would expect that he's going to come back out. So if you guys have some additional questions for him, yeah, Kaiden, they are. These are some of my favorites when I come in here to look at them. They're just so neat looking. A few pieces left up. Oh. Going in for you, so you see this number of fish in the tank. You're not really seeing any squabbling, they're just looking for the food as it floats down and grabbing it. Come back, guys. All right, Kyle is back. So, if you have any final questions for him. I know that Nate asked how many times a day, which Kyle said three times a week. So yeah, fish don't have to eat every single day, unlike us. Um, you really only have to give them, well, the warm water fish only three times a day. Some of cold water fish, they only eat once a week, if that. So it really depends. Again, you you might hear me say that a lot during a lot of these fish chat, is it depends, it depends, it depends. Like I said before, fish are so, diverse there's so many different types and shapes and sizes and kinds that uh, you can't have one you almost can't have one answer for all fish what was that you were feeding them krill so they got krill today so even on the days they get fed monday wednesday friday on those days there's different options of food that we can give them so they have multiple multiple different choices and it changes all the time and how do you know if they've all eaten so I, I'm pretty good at keeping an eye on them from the top, um, and I can see which individuals are need to eat a little bit more or haven't eaten enough and things like that. Um, I definitely aim more for the smaller ones, just because they they don't get to as much of an opportunity because the big guys push them out of the way. Uh, and then the big guys I'm not as worried about because they could, some of them are a little on the huskier side, you could go a little while without. And so one of the things, um Oh, Anastasia H5 wants to know how you aren't overfeeding them. That's, oh, that's a good a great question. question. So when we look at our fish, we want to we look at them, we do a body score condition, which we do for every animal at the zoo. We want to make sure that they don't get too heavy. Um, we feed them different types of food. We try to stay away from the fattier foods to give them all the time. And we will also give them something called low calorie gel, which is just a nice, easy, nutritious food for them as well, too. And that's kind of a nice segue into, um, you said body score um, conditioning. These guys receive the same level of care as all of our other guys. So yep. they're, we're equipped to handle these guys if one gets sick with we, our vet on site. We are, we have um, the vet on site. We have special gloves that we can use to handle these guys. They're not sting proof, but they're definitely resistant. Uh, we have a whole sting procedure that we developed specifically just for these guys in case somebody does unfortunately get stung. We know it's everybody who is in or near or around them, even if they don't work with fish or other people who work with the monkeys, are trained what to do in case somebody gets stung in the whole line. And what do you do if you were to get stung? Uh, if you yourself get stung, the biggest thing to do is to remain as calm as you possibly can. Um, don't get your heart rate all elevated and crazy because it's going to help spread the venom faster. Um, you're going to want to go to the hospital, definitely seek medical attention. Not so much because it's, it's going to kill you, but you just want to be safe no matter what. Um, warm water, as hot as you can tolerate, um, is, is key. It actually helps break down the venom and it makes it not hurt as much. Uh, you're going to want to put ice because it's going to swell but don't do that because it makes it way, way worse. Hot water, but you also have to have somebody there with you because if you're not gonna be paying attention, you can actually scald yourself from wanting such a hot water because it feels so nice. So the key is get help and stay calm and let professionals take care of you. All right, 
So I think we've run through all the questions. There have been some great questions oh, yeah. today. And I'm going to just take one more close-up shot of these guys. I remind you again, if you love our virtual keeper chats, to give us lots of hearts, share them with your friends. If you guys actually look um, over here, too, the eels might be coming out. She's looking can... for food. All right. And so there is a shot of our snowflake eel. Oh, she's poking her head back in moving around a little bit if yep. she so comes she's back out kyle's really good at finding spotting her so the eel's coming out right now looking for any scraps that the lionfish missed and if she gets super hungry on wednesday when we feed him again she can come right up to the top and grab some more food all right well thank you guys for joining us today we hope you've enjoyed this virtual keeper chat and we will see you again tomorrow at 11. thank you kyle um, for helping teach everybody about these guys and goodbye from our lionfish. You guys have a great day.